Harper Audio presents A Feast for Crows by George R. R. Martin Read by Roy Detrice Prologue Dragons, said Melander. He snatched a withered apple off the ground and tossed it hand to hand. Throw the apple, urged Alaris the Sphinx. He slipped an arrow from his quiver and knocked it to his bowstring. I should like to see a dragon. Rune was the youngest of them, a chunky boy still two years shy of manhood. I should like that very much. And I should like to sleep with Rose's arms around me, Pate thought. He shifted restlessly on the bench. By the morrow, the girl could well be his. I will take her far from Old Town, across the narrow sea, to one of the free cities. There were no maesters there, no one to accuse him. He could hear Emma's laughter coming through a shuttered window overhead, mingled with the deeper voice of the man she was entertaining. She was the oldest of the serving wenches at the quill and tankard, forty if she was a day, but still pretty in a fleshy sort of way. Rosie was her daughter, fifteen and freshly flowered. Emma had decreed that Rosie's maidenhead would cast a golden dragon. Pate had saved nine silver stags and a pot of silver stars and pennies for all the good that would do him. He would have stood a better chance of hatching a real dragon than saving up enough coin to make a golden one. "'You were born too late for dragons, lad,' Armin the Acolyte told Rune. Armin wore a leather thong about his neck, strung with links of pewter, tin, lead, and copper. And like most acolytes, he seemed to believe that novices had turnips growing from their shoulders in place of heads. The last one perished during the reign of King Aegon III. The last dragon in Westeros, insisted Melander. Throw the apple, Alaris urged again. He was a comely youth, their sphinx. All serving wenches doted on him. Even Rosie would sometimes touch him on the arm when she brought him wine, and Pate had to gnash his teeth and pretend not to see. The last dragon in Westeros was the last dragon, said Armand doggedly. That is well known. The apple, Alaris said, unless you mean to eat it. Here, dragging his club foot, Melander took a short hop, whirled, and whipped the apple sidearm into the mist that hung above the honey wine. If not for his foot, he would have been a knight like his father. He had the strength for it, in those thick arms and broad shoulders. Far and fast the apple flew, but not as fast as the arrow that whistled after it, a yard-long shaft of golden wood fletched with scarlet feathers. Pate did not see the arrow catch the apple, but he heard it. A soft chunk echoed back across the river, followed by a splash. Melander whistled. You caught it, sweet, not half as sweet as Rosie. Pate loved her hazel eyes and budding breasts and the way she smiled every time she saw him. He loved the dimples in her cheeks. Sometimes she went barefoot as she served, to feel the grass beneath her feet. He loved that, too. He loved the clean, fresh smell of her, the way her hair curled behind her ears. He even loved her toes. One night she let him rub her feet and play with them, and he made up a funny tale for every toe to keep her giggling. Perhaps he would do better to remain on this side of the narrow sea. He could buy a donkey with a coin he'd saved, and he and Rosie could take turns riding it as they wandered westwards. Ebros might not think him worthy of the silver, but Pate knew how to set a bone and leech a fever. The small folk would be grateful for his help. If he could learn to cut hair and shave beards, he might even be a barber. That would be enough, he told himself, so long as I had Rosie. Rosie was all that he wanted in the world. That had not always been so. Once he had dreamed of being a maester in a castle, a service to some open-handed lord who would honour him for his wisdom and bestow a fine white horse on him to thank him for his service. How high he'd ride, how nobly, smiling down at the small folk when he passed them on the road. One night, in the Quill and Tankard's common room, after his second tankard of fearsomely strong cider, Pate had boasted that he would not always be a novice. Too true, Lazy Leo had called out. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?